uh, the topic sterilization and disinfection now what makes this topic very important what is this that makes the thorough important for sterilization and disinfection in microbiology as we all know microorganisms are present everywhere it is ubiquitous they either lead to contamination they cause infection disease and decay so it is very essential in removing or destroying these organism once in such materials and from such areas so that is what these two points are all about microorganisms are ubiquitous they cause contamination infection and decay so it becomes necessary to remove or destroy them from materials or from areas the process of sterilization is used in microbiology for preventing contamination by extraneous organisms in surgery for maintaining asepsis and of course in food and drug manufacture for ensuring safety from external contaminating organisms so i repeat the process of sterilization is used in microbiology to prevent contamination by extraneous organisms or microorganisms in surgery for maintaining asepsis in food and drug manufacture for ensuring safety from contaminating microorganisms so the method of sterilization employed it depends on the purpose for which it is going to be carried out so why are we going to bring about sterilization so the method will decide on the purpose for which it is carried out the materials which is to be sterilized so you cannot use all the procedures for all type of materials and substances so the materials which has to be sterilized and the nature of materials that are to be removed or destroyed so nature it is not the nature of materials it is typo error again the nature of microorganisms that are to be removed or destroyed so when typing it was an error made by me i think so the nature of microorganisms that are to be removed in case if it is a non spore form or a vegetative cell you can kill them at around 50 to 60 degrees celsius a normal pasteurization will do the procedure in case if you are going to kill the organism that is a spore relating form you have to go in for higher temperature that is 121 degrees celsius that you employ autoclave in case of the uh, substance that you are going to sterilize is a sugary solution you cannot go in with using heat because it will get charred you have to go into procedures like filtration so the uh, method not only employs or not only considers the material that you are going to bring about to sterilization but also the nature of microorganisms that you are trying to remove from the substance i repeat the method of sterilization employed depends on the purpose for which it is carried out the materials which has to be sterilized and the nature of microorganisms that are to be removed or destroyed so few definitions that should be borne in mind before we go into uh, the further topics of sterilization carrying out the procedures of sterilization the first one we have is what is sterilization so the process by which an article surface or medium is free of all living microorganisms either in the vegetative or spore relating form so it is a phenomenon or a process by which any article any surface or any medium is freed from all type of living microorganisms either in its vegetative or spore relating form then we have disinfection which is the destruction of all pathogenic organisms which are capable to give rise to infection so disinfection is the destruction of all pathogenic microorganisms or organisms capable of giving rise to infection we have another term antisepsis that indicates the prevention of infection usually by inhibiting the growth of bacteria in wound or tissue in case if you are going to use uh, a chemical substance on the live surface of your skin you call it an antisepsis okay antiseptic so indicated the prevention of infection usually by inhibiting the growth of bacteria in wounds or tissues chemical disinfectant which can be safely applied to skin or mucous membrane and are used to prevent infection by inhibiting the growth of bacteria is called as 
antiseptic. In case if you use a chemical disinfectant onto your tissue or wound surface, you call it as antiseptics and the phenomenon is called as antisepsis. So three words, sterilization, disinfection, antiseptics or antisepsis. One more word we have to come across is decontamination. Decontamination refers to the process of rendering an article or area free of danger from contaminants, including microbial, chemical, radioactive or other hazards. So if you have an area, if you have an article with such dangerous uh, pollutants, you have to remove them. So decontamination is not only removing the contaminant, including microbes, but they are also removing the chemical, radioactive or other, other hazardous substances that are present. So decontamination refers to the process of rendering an article or area free of danger from contaminants, including microbial, chemical, radioactive and other hazards. Then we come across two more definitions, the bactericidal agent and bacteriostatic agent. Bactericidal agents are those agents which are able to kill bacteria. The word sidal means killing. What you generally pronounce it as sidal, it is not sidal, it is sidal. So sidal is the word that refers to killing bacteria and since it is with the bacteria, bacteria it is called as bactericidal agent which kills bacteria. On the other hand, we have bacteriostatic agent. Bacteriostatic agents are those which only prevents the multiplication of bacteria which may however remain alive. So bacteria are not killed with the bacteriostatic agent. They only inhibit the multiplication of the bacterial cell. So a chemical agent at a higher concentration, if you see, it will be bactericidal in case if it has diluted many times, it becomes bacteriostatic. So a simple same chemical agent may be bactericidal at one concentration, bacteriostatic at other concentrations. So that is what is the next sentence. A chemical which is bactericidal at a particular concentration may be only bacteriostatic at a higher dilution. And as far as you dilute the battery signal agent, higher dilution will make it only bacteriostatic. It will not allow killing of bacteria. So that is what this sentence means. And now the effective chemical agents that you use should be not specifically bactericidal, not specifically bacteriostatic. It should be microbicidal or germicidal, what you call as broad spectrum. So it should kill all varieties of microorganisms or all types of germs. That is what is an ideal characteristic of an effective chemical agent. For example, the chemical agent should, that you use should be bactericidal, virucidal, an agent that kills virus, fungicidal, an agent that kills fungi. So it is a broad spectrum chemical, which can be totally called as germicidal or microbicidal which means it kills all variety or all forms of microorganisms present in an article or a surface. So an agent that kills all forms is called as microbicidal or germicidal agent. So now we are touching or coming inside sterilization. Sterilization broadly are using two different means. Uh, sterilization and disinfection are commonly told. The physical agents and the chemical agents. So to bring or to ensure sterilization, we can use physical agent as well as chemical agents. Under physical agents, we have uh, examples, the sunlight, drying, heat. Heat, again classified into two different types, the dry heat sterilization and moist heat sterilization that we will be looking in greater detail in the future slides. Filtrations. Three different types of filters commonly used, the candles, asbestos patch, and membranes. Radiation, two forms again, the ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. And of course, the final one, ultrasonic and sonic vibration. So physical agents that brings about sterilization is broadly classified into six different methods using sunlight, using drying, heating phenomenon, filtration, radiation, and of course, ultrasonic and sonic vibration. So the chemical agents, on the other hand, if you see, we use these different chemical agents, the alcohols, ethyl isopropyl and thychlorobutanol, 
aldehydes giving importance to formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde dyes halogens phenols surface active agents metallic salts and gases what you bring about fumigation or fumigants which includes ethylene oxide formaldehyde and the beta propiolactin which you call as bpl abbreviated as bpl so the chemical agents that is used for disinfection i repeat again the alcohols aldehydes dyes halogens phenols surface active agents metallic salts and gases for sterilization which includes ethylene oxide formaldehyde and beta propiolactone so each one we will see it in an greater detail so we are going to physical methods of sterilization the first method uh, which is least used method of course is the sunlight it is said that it possesses appreciable bactericidal activity the action of this is because of the content of uv rays so the uh, sunlight possesses appreciable bactericidal activity the action is due to its content of ultraviolet rays sample and greek showed that in india typhoid bacilli exposed to the sun on pieces of white drill cloth were killed in 2 hours whereas controls kept in the dark were still alive for 6 days which is alive after 6 days so there was a proof by sample and greek that the organisms microorganisms when exposed to, to sunlight are eventually killed that is why sunlight is brought under one method of physical sterilization but we cannot ensure 100% surety still it is a method of sterilization i repeat it again it possesses appreciable bactericidal activity action is due to its content of ultraviolet rays sample in greek show that in india typhoid bacillus that is salmonella typhi exposed to the sun on pieces of white drill cloth were killed in 2 hours whereas controls kept in the dark were still alive after 6 days the next method we have is uh, drying Uh, we all know that four fifths of weight of the bacterial cell or any cell is composed of water. So four four fifth of weight of the bacterial cell is due to water, and drying in air has therefore a deleterious effect on many bacteria. This method is unreliable and is only of theoretical interest. So we mean that drying will kill the organism, but it is of theoretical interest. Spores are unaffected by the phenomenon of drying. Spores does not get disturbed or killed by drying so that is what is said drying the drying this method is unreliable and is only of theoretical interest and spores are not affected by drying the last method which we saw was ultrasonic and sonic vibration because the rest we have to see in a greater detail that is why i've brought that in front ultrasonic and sonic vibrations bactericidal power but the results have been variable so every time you cannot ensure that the results are common you cannot give one specific uh, timing and one specific method that gives you that gives you 100% surety is what ultrasonic and sonic vibration is all about the results varies even though it is used for treatment there were survivors after the treatment procedures the organisms when it was plated were able to grow so survivors were found after the treatment hence no practical value in sterilization and disinfection presently so i repeat ultrasonic and sonic vibration bactericidal power but the result has been variable survivors found after treatment and hence no practical value in sterilization and disinfection so the least used method in sterilization the physical method are the sunlight drying ultrasonic and sonic vibrations now we are stepping inside heat as a method of sterilization heat we basically classify that into two different types dry heat and moist heat the word itself suggests you moist heat and amount of moisture is maintained while dry heat it is completely dry the phenomenon is fully dry so heat two different phenomenons dry heat and moist heat most reliable method of sterilization so heating is the most reliable method of sterilization and all the practical procedures that is included in microbiology will apply heat as a method of sterilization starting from heating your inoculation loop 
to the sterilization of culture media and the glassware so everything employs this procedure so it is the most reliable method of sterilization should be a method of choice unless contraindicated the word contraindicated tells you in case if the media contains any sugary gelatin substance you cannot overheat it because it will get charged so the temperature should always be maintained so it should be a method of choice unless contraindicated so what are the factors influencing heat as a method of sterilization of you see is the nature of heat that has to be employed whether the materials that you are going to sterilize should go with what is called as dry heat sterilization or moist heat sterilization for example culture media you cannot use dry heat culture media will contain moisture in it it is water content so if you go in for dry heat imagine what will happen so you have to ultimately go in for moist heat sterilization to sterilize culture media so the nature of heat that has to be employed based on the materials or the substances that you are going to uh, sterilize that is what is important so either dry heat or moist heat can be selected the temperature and the time that is going to be employed whether the temperature you are going to employ is just 60 degrees celsius or it has to touch 160 degrees celsius what is the time that you are going to employ whether it is only 10 minutes or 15 minutes or you are going to wait for 1 hour so temperature at time influences again the factor heat number of microorganisms present so what is the number of microorganisms present and the characteristic of the organism regarding its species strain whether the organism has a sporing capacity or it is a non spore former and the type of material from which the organisms have to be eradicated if it is going to be a surface normal surface or whether it is going to be a culture media or whether you are going to just to sterilize a glassware so the type of material from which the organisms have to be eradicated i repeat this points again factors influencing heat as a method of sterilization are nature of heat dry heat or moist heat the temperature and time number of microorganisms present characteristic of the organism such as species strain sporing capacity and type of material from which the organisms have to be eradicated one word or one definition that you have to remember when you touch heat as a method of sterilization the thermal death time which is written as tdt it is the minimum time required to kill a suspension of organisms at a predetermined temperature in a specified environment so if you have if you are given a media what is the predetermined temperature that you are going to employ and what is the time that is being allotted for sterilization is it a thermal death time to ensure 100% sterilization okay so that is the word which means i repeat the sentence again the minimum time required to kill a suspension of organisms at a predetermined temperature in a specified environment so the time required for sterilization is inversely proportional to the temperature of exposure that's we have been studying from day one again if the temperature is high the time will be less if the time is higher the temperature will be less so that is what we mean so it is inversely proportional to each other so the time required for sterilization is inversely proportional to the temperature of its exposure we are stepping inside dry heat sterilization the killing effect of dry heat is due to protein denaturation oxidative damage and the toxic effect of elevated levels of electrolyte so how does this method work or what is the killing effect of dry heat sterilization if you see it brings out protein de denaturation oxidative damage and uh, toxic effect of elevated levels of electrolyte increases the levels of electrolyte so when there is elevated levels of electrolyte ultimately the cells go goes to the death phase i repeat the killing effect of dry heat is due to protein denaturation oxidative damage and the toxic effect of elevated levels of electrolytes so what are the common methods of dry heat sterilization that we will be employing in microbiology laboratory if you see flaming or you can call it a red heat incineration and the use of hot air oven so three different methods that are commonly employed as a method of dry heat sterilization flaming or red heat incineration and of course the use of hot air oven
flaming cause inoculation loop or wire loop the tips of forceps teasing needles and searing spatulas are held in bunsen flame till they are red hot so this procedure we have already done in the laboratory mouth of test tubes conical flasks can be sterilized before and after taking the cultures so this is again is a procedure that you have uh, followed in the practical laboratory so I repeat flaming or red heat you can use inoculation this method for inoculation loops or inoculation wires the tips of forceps teasing needles spatula searing spatulas with the help of bunsen flame or you can go in with sterilization of the mouth of test tubes or conical flask for sterilization before and after uh, taking or removing the cultures incineration the simple word it is a burning up process it is an excellent method for safely destroying materials such as contaminated cloth animal care cases and pathological Uh, materials it is a burning up process plastic such as pvc and polyethylene can be dealt with similarly but uh, polystyrene materials emit clouds of dense black smoke and hence should be autoclaved in appropriate container so again incineration cannot be followed for all the uh, materials that has to be sterilized the burning up process because it eliminates or it ejects what is called the smoke that leads to pollution so certain materials like polystyrene can be dealt with autoclaving but the rest of the material like uh, uh, contaminated cloths hospital beddings animal care cases or what we call a sanitary sanitary pads that we all use and pathological materials can be uh, sterilized using incinerator or with the process of incineration so this is an incinerator that we use and of course oxelium college also has incinerator to sterilize the sanitary pads that the girl children use so i repeat this slide again excellent method for safely destroying materials such as contaminated cloth animal care cases and pathological materials it is burning up process plastic such as pvc and polyethylene can be dealt with similarly but polystyrene materials emit clouds of dense black smoke and hence should be autoclaved in appropriate containers very important part of uh, dry heat sterilization the hot air oven most widely used method of sterilization of course sterilization again i have typo error uh, the spelling has gone wrong so sterilization is by dry heat i repeat the word again This is the most widely used method of sterilization is by dry heat the working temperature is 160 degrees celsius and the holding time is 1 hour i repeat working temperature is 160 degrees celsius for holding time 1 hour is employed it is used to sterilize glass wares forceps scissors scalpels all glass syringes cotton swabs some pharmaceutical products such as dusting powders liquid paraffin fats and grease so what can be sterilized using hot air oven all types of glassware can be sterilized so it is used to sterilize glassware for forceps scissors scalpels all glass syringes cotton swabs some pharmaceutical products in the form of powders dusting powders liquid paraffin fats and grease regarding its operation how do you operate in hotter oven of course we all know the oven is heated by electricity it is operated with electricity it is fitted with a fan to ensure even distribution of air it will have an internal fan to check out whether there is even distribution of air because it is heat air that is being generated one particular place the instrument will burst so you have to ensure that the hot air is evenly distributed to the entire oven so it is fitted with a fan test tubes flask and all glassware should be wrapped with a craft paper and should be completely dry before being placed in the oven of course everybody of us would have done this procedure it should be in case if it is a test tube you have to wash the test tube plug it with cotton wrap it with a craft paper then go in for sterilization that is what it means so test tubes flask and all glassware should be wrapped with craft paper and should be completely dry before being placed in the oven 
the oven should never be overloaded so it requires space for the even distribution of hot air so if you overload it the air will not pass it will be stagnant in a particular place the uh, glass vases may go at the risk of breaking up the oven must be allowed to cool, cool slowly for about 2 hours after you switch it on you have to go in for a set temperature of 160 degrees celsius you have to hold 160 degrees celsius for 1 hour that is why it is called as holding time once you switch off the oven you have to wait for 2 hours for the door to be opened after cooling since the glass vase may crack due to sudden or uneven cooling so i repeat the operation the oven is heated by electricity it is fitted with a fan to ensure even distribution of air test tubes flasks and all glassware should be wrapped with craft paper and should be completely dry before being placed in the oven should not be overloaded the oven must be allowed to cool slowly for about 2 hours before the door is opened since the glassware may crack due to sudden or uneven cooling so of course so we know how a hotter oven look like the diagram of hotter oven we have seen that in your laboratories so this is one picture to enlighten you this ma'am you know who she is she, she she is teaching the first year students probably i think she's vidya who's holding that uh, the student vidya who's there so placing of glass vase wrapped with the paper or, uh, it is mixed with paper craft paper please don't think craft paper is like gift wrapping paper it is not so it is a brown paper that you have to use for it is a brown thick sheet that you have to use it for wrapping the glass wares the sterilization control the organism used is clostridium tetany the spores of a non toxigenic strain of clostridium tetany are used as a microbiological test to, to test the dry heat efficacy or efficiency paper strips impregnated with 10 power 6 pores are placed in envelopes and inserted into suitable packs so as you place the glassware the paper strips of 10 power 6 pores of clostridium tetany will be inserted in the gaps after sterilization that is 160 degrees celsius for 1 hour the strips are removed and inoculated into thioglycolate or robertson cooked meat media and incubated for sterility test under strict anaerobic condition for 5 days at 37 degrees celsius a browning tube or a green spot is also available for dry heat and is convenient for routine use after proper sterilization a uh, green color is produced a simple color test also is available to check the efficacy of Uh, what is called as dry heat sterilization i repeat sterilization control of dry heat sterilization the spores of a non toxigenic strain of clostridium tetany are used as a microbiological test of dry heat efficacy paper strips impregnated with 10 power 6 pores are placed in envelopes and inserted into suitable packs after sterilization the strips are removed and inoculated into thioglycolate broth or robertson cooked meat medium and incubated for sterility test under strict anaerobic conditions for 5 days at 37 degrees celsius a brownie tube is also available for dry heat and is convenient for routine use after proper sterilization a green color product is produced the next one we have we are touching other method of uh, heat as a method of sterilization we have moist heat sterilization the killing effect or the lethal effect of moist heat sterilization is due to the denaturation and coagulation of protein so how does it kill the organism is by means of denaturing and coagulating the protein content of the microorganism so what are the common temperatures employed in moist heat sterilization if you see are the four different temperatures the temperature below 100 degrees celsius temperature at 100 degrees celsius steam at atmospheric pressure that is steam at 100 degrees celsius steam under pressure that is the steam above 100 degrees celsius so four different temperatures that are employed to bring about moist heat sterilization temperature below 100 temperature at 100 steam at 100 steam above 100 degree celsius so temperature below 100 degree celsius one common very beautiful method that we use is pasteurization what is pasteurization a very important definition 
the process of heating a liquid beverage at a certain temperature followed by immediate cooling to destroy pathogenic and contaminating microorganisms i repeat pasteurization it is the name which is given honoring louis pasteur the inventor of the procedure so pasteurization is the process of heating liquid beverage at a certain temperature followed by immediate cooling to destroy pathogenic and contaminating microorganisms there are two basic processes of pasteurization you have one more procedure ultra high pasteurization which employs 128 degrees celsius for fraction of second but that is not being mentioned here the common temperatures that is being employed is the holders process and flash process there are two different temperatures that we will study under pasteurization the holders process low temperature high time high temperature short time is the flash process ht st is flash process lt ht is the holders process so holder process the temperature employed is 63 degrees celsius for 30 minutes followed by immediate cooling at 13 degrees celsius and lower the flash process employs 72 degrees celsius for 15 to 20 seconds followed by quick cooling to 13 degrees celsius or lower so in, that is why we say temperature is inversely proportional to the time 63 30 72 15 so that is what the difference lies so i repeat pasteurization two different process the holders process which is also called as lthd low temperature high time employs 30 63 degree celsius i'm sorry 63 degree celsius for 30 minutes followed by quickly cooling to 13 degree celsius or lower the flash process high temperature short time htst which employs 72 degrees celsius for 15 to 20 seconds followed by quickly cooling to 13 degrees celsius or lower by this process all non sporing pathogens such as mycobacteria brucella and salmonella are destroyed coxella bernetti is relatively heat resistant may survive the holders process so initially holders process were used for all milk the um, other processes which is generated from milk then came to what is called as flash pasteurized when it was liquid beverage sterilization like wine beer etc because there are certain organisms that were heat resistant and were able to withstand the holder process so one such example is given coxella bernetti is relatively heat resistant and may survive the holders process and it may be killed it is killed at using the flash process so the diagram very well depicts you two methods heating section where you will go either with a holder or flash process and the coolest cooling section where you will reduce the temperature before it is pasteurized and supplied outside then what else are we using so vaccines of non sporing bacteria are heat inactivated in special vaccine bath so we have vaccine baths which works at 60 degrees celsius so we use a uh, vaccine bath for heat inactivation at 60 degrees celsius for 1 hour and of course serum or body fluids containing coagulable proteins if it is coagulable proteins if you go in using higher temperatures the protein will get dysfunctional denatured so you have to again go in for uh, a lesser temperature so you will use 56 degrees celsius in an water bath on several successive days so i repeat the sentence again serum or body fluids containing coagulable proteins can be sterilized by heating for 1 hour at 56 degrees celsius in a water bath on several successive days and of course media such as lovenstein jensen medium what you uh, chelama call as lj medium and loffler serum slope are rendered sterile by heating at 80 to 85 degrees celsius for half an hour on three successive days uh, what the phenomenon called as inspisation using an inspisator okay so media such as lj medium and loffler serum slope are rendered sterile by heating at 80 to 85 degrees celsius for half an hour on three successive days temperature at 100 degrees celsius the very beautiful bird that we come across is boiling the boiling temperature vegetative bacteria are killed almost immediately at 90 to 100 degrees celsius but sporing bacteria requires prolonged period of boiling sterilization may be promoted 
by addition of 2% sodium bicarbonate to water. To increase the process of boiling, you will add 2% sodium bicarbonate to water. Boiling is not recommended for sterilizing of instruments used for surgical procedures and should be regarded only as the means of disinfection. So when you go in for surgery or surgical procedures, boiling is not recommended. I repeat the slide again. Temperature at 100 degrees Celsius, boiling. Vegetative bacteria are killed almost immediately at 90 to 100 degrees Celsius, but sporing bacteria require prolonged period of boiling. Sterilization may be promoted by the addition of 2% sodium bicarbonate to water. Boiling is not recommended for sterilizing of instruments used for surgical procedures and should be regarded only as a means of disinfection. Steam at atmospheric pressure or what you call as 100 degrees steam at 100 degrees Celsius. An atmosphere of free steam is used to sterilize culture media which may decompose if subjected to higher temperature. In case if you think the culture media, if you subject it to a higher temperature, it is going, not going to be worthwhile. So you can go in for using a temperature which is in the form of steam at 100 degrees Celsius, not at above, I mean not above 100 degrees Celsius. So what instrument you use is a Fox or Arnold steamer is usually employed or is usually used. So few would have pronounced it as poach. It is not poach, it is puck. So puck or Arnold steamer is usually used. This is an inexpensive method, a simple method. The container and medium are simultaneously sterilized. Evaporation from the medium is prevented and the apparatus requires little or no attention. Of course, it is moist heat sterilization. So evaporation, it is not going to get dried out. So very least concentration is required. No attention may also be there. So it can be maintained in a proper condition. So I repeat the slide again. Steam at atmospheric pressure or 100 degrees Celsius. An atmosphere of free steam is used to sterilize culture media which may decompose if subjected to higher temperatures. A puck or Arnold steamer is usually used. This is an inexpensive method. The container and medium are simultaneously sterilized. Evaporation from the medium is prevented and the apparatus requires little or no attention. So this is an Fox or Arnold steam, steam sterilizer. And of course, how it is employed, you see, it has a thermometer, it has a lid, it has a water gauge, and a ring of flames is there to generate what is called as heat. So the steamer consists of a tinned copper cabinet with a wall suitably lagged that is closed. The lid is conical, enabling drainage of condensed steam and a perforated tray fitted above the water level ensures that the material placed on it is surrounded by the steam. Of course, similar to how does an autoclave look like, but in, in a very older version of an autoclave, we can say, right? The appearance look like that. Uh, it has a ring of flame that operates to generate heat. So I repeat the sentence. The steam consists of a, the steamer consists of a tinned copper cabinet with a wall suitably lacked. The lid is conical. If you look into the picture, it will very well tell you. The original picture is conical in shape. Enable drainage of condensed steam and a perforated tray fitted above the water level ensures that the material placed on it is surrounded by steam. A single exposure of 90 minutes usually ensures sterilization, but for media containing sugars or gelatin, an exposure of 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes on three successive days is used. And this phenomenon and this procedure is called as tindalization or intermittent sterilization. So when you use 100 degrees Celsius, for 20 minutes on three consecutive or successive days, you call it tindalization or intermittent sterilization because intermittent why it is called as three days you are repeating the procedure. Okay, so that is why it is called as intermittent sterilization. The principle behind this, if you see, is the first exposure that kills all the vegetative forms of bacteria and the spores, since they are in favorable medium now, will germinate and be killed on subsequent Occasion. So first it is killing vegetative cells and the rest of the days after germination of spores, it ensures sterility by killing the spores. 
So I repeat the principle. Uh, the principle is that the first exposure kills all the vegetative bacteria and the spores since they are in favorable medium will germinate and be killed on the subsequent occasion. I repeat the slide for your understanding again. A single exposure of 90 minutes usually ensures sterilization, but for media containing sugars or gelatin, an exposure of 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes on three successive days is used. This is known as stindalization or intermittent sterilization. The principle is that the first exposure kills all vegetative bacteria and the spores since they are in favorable medium will germinate and be killed on the subsequent occasions. Steam under pressure or above the steam above 100 degrees Celsius an autoclave we will use for the purpose. So autoclave or steam sterilizer the principle behind its work. So water usually boils when the vapor pressure inside a closed vessel is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So water boils when its vapor pressure equals that of the surrounding atmosphere. Hence, when pressure inside a closed vessel increases, the temperature at which the water boils also will increases. It, it works similarly to a principle of a pressure cooker that we use. The saturated steam have high penetrative power. When steam comes into contact with a cooler surface, it condenses to water and gives up its latent heat to that surface. So the condensed water ensures moist condition for killing the microbes present. So that is how it works. Very simple principle in a closed container. When the pressure inside the container is equal to atmospheric pressure, the water starts boiling. The, once the water starts boiling, since the vessel is closed, it hits on the lid and it falls back as a latent heat in the form of moisture or humid humidity so that it ensures killing of the microorganism. That is why it is called as moist heat sterilization because an amount of moisture is maintained in the vessel. I repeat the principle again. Water boils when it's Vapor pressure equals that of the surrounding atmosphere. Hence, when pressure inside a closed vessel increases, the temperature at which water boils also increases. Saturated steam have penetrative power, high penetrative power. When steam comes into contact with a cooler surface, it condenses to water and gives up its latent heat to that surface. The condensed water ensures moist conditions for killing the microbes present. Of course, as we all know, it comes very slowly. The working temperature of an autoclave is 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes at 15 LBS pressure. It is used for sterilizing culture media, dressings, laboratory wear, instruments, and of course, pharmaceutical products. I repeat, the working temperature of an autoclave is 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes at 15 LBS pressure. It is used for sterilizing culture media, the dressings, laboratory wares, instruments, and pharmaceutical products. Several types of steam sterilizers are commonly in use. Uh, the, the first predominant one we have, which a normal laboratory, biological laboratory uses, is the laboratory autoclave, which is on the extreme left in the picture. Then we have hospital dressing sterilizer, where you can go with multi-load sterilization. And you have bowl and instrument sterilizer, rapid cooling sterilizers. We are going with laboratory autoclaves. It consists of a vertical or horizontal cylinder of gunmetal or stainless steel in a supporting sheet iron case. The lid or door is fastened by screw clamps and made airtight by a suitable washer. I think all of you have seen an autoclave and all of you have worked with an autoclave. So it may be either vertical or it may be horizontal. Maybe in the uh, further slide, you can see the picture. So it is vertical autoclave or horizontal in size made a uh, structure made up of gunmetal or uh, stainless steel. It has a lid that is fastened by screw clamps to make to ensure being airtight with a suitable washer. The autoclave has on its lid or upper side a discharge tap for air and steam, a pressure gauge and a safety valve that can be set to blow off at the desired pressure. So the temperature, the timing is set. So when it reaches the desired pressure, the safety valve will blow. 
it is heated by electricity the holding period of 15 minutes is calculated after the autoclave reaches 121 degrees celsius ensure the pressure inside the autoclave is reduced with the help of pressure gauge after you switch it off if the autoclave is open when the pressure inside is high liquid media will tend to boil violently and spill from the container and sometime an explosion may occur until and unlike you bring down the temperature of any sterilizing instrument you should not open it because there will be breakdown or spillage of any uh, media which is present inside it so if you look into this laboratory autoclave two picture is there one is the vertical autoclave which is there in our laboratory as well uh, the horizontal autoclave is on the right extreme simple autoclave that remains horizontal in size that is what for sterilization control we use the strain the spores of bacillus stereothermophilus for determining the efficacy of moist heat sterilization spores of bacillus stereothermophilus are used as the test organism this is a thermophilic organism with an optimum growth temperature of 55 to 60 degree celsius it is a thermophile and its spores requires an exposure of 12 minutes at 121 degree celsius to be killed so in order to kill the spores of bacteria bacillus stereo sorry bacillus stereothermophilus it has to be exposed to 121 degree celsius for 12 minutes at 60 i mean at uh, at a specified pressure that is 15 lbs pressure because the optimum growth temperature of the organism is 60 degrees celsius it is a thermophilic organism the paper strips impregnated with 10 power 6 spores are dried at room temperature and placed in paper envelopes these are again inserted in different parts of the load after sterilization the strips are inoculated in a suitable recovering medium and incubated for sterility test at 55 degrees celsius because this is the optimum temperature for its growth for five successive days or five days i repeat sterilization control of uh, autoclave for determining the efficacy of moist heat sterilization spores of bacillus stereothermophilus are used as a test organism this is a thermophilic organism with an optimum growth temperature of 55 degrees celsius to 60 degrees celsius and its spores requires an exposure of 12 minutes at 121 degrees celsius to be killed paper strips impregnated with 10 power 6 spores are dried at room temperature and placed in paper envelopes these are inserted in different parts of the load after sterilization the strips are inoculated into a suitable recovering medium and incubated for sterility testing at 55 degrees celsius for 5 days